In this tutorial, I'm going to show you everything you need to get your Raven Guard painted. Welcome to Tape Talk Ready. My name's Michael, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to paint Raven Guard. I'll put the brushes and paints I use in this tutorial in the description below, as well as putting them on the screen when I use them. If you enjoy my content, please give this video a like and let me know in the comments below. And if you want to help support what I do, you can become a channel member or you can join my Patreon, which I'll also link in the description. I really appreciate any help and support and it goes a long way to growing the channel and allows me to keep improving the content I create for you. And I massively appreciate the continued support from these amazing people. As well, I want to say a massive thank you to LineLine who has recently donated to the channel so thank you very much it's really appreciated before we get started building and painting our miniatures it's always a good idea to think about how we're going to build them and what undercoat we're going to use whenever i'm putting something together i like to think about building in sub assemblies this helps the painting process making it easier to paint areas that may be difficult to get to if the miniatures were fully built I've also chosen to undercoat our Raven Guard using Chaos Black Spray. This is because the main colour of Raven Guard is black, which is going to make painting the armour a lot easier for us. Through this tutorial, I'll be showing you all the techniques and steps that you'll need to get your Raven Guard painted, and to make it easier to follow along with, I'll divide this tutorial up into different chapters. In this first section of the tutorial, I want to show you the steps to painting Raven Guard power armour. Having a colour scheme that is pretty much completely black can be quite boring, so hopefully throughout this tutorial I'm going to be able to show you how to make our Raven Guard look more interesting. The first thing we're going to do is to paint all the armour joints, and I'm using Iron Hand Steel, and we're doing this now so we don't have to worry about being messy and ruining anything we've already painted. Whenever we're painting something, it's important to thin our paints first, and I tend to use an equal amount of water. I also remove some of the paint on some paper towel, so we don't have an overloaded brush. We also want to keep our brush moving, and we want to avoid going over areas we've already painted, to prevent creating any unwanted texture whilst the paint is still drying. And because we thinned our paints, you'll see that it hasn't covered very well. So let's repeat the process and paint another layer. This is going to give us a nicer finish without taking away any detail. Continue to paint layers until you have a solid colour. Thinning our paints and painting in multiple layers is very fundamental to achieving the best results. So now we know this, we can carry on and apply this when painting our Raven Guard. The other thing we're going to do before we really get into painting the black power armour is to paint our base colour. For the base colour I'm using a bad and black even though we use Chaos Black as our undercoat. This is because the colours from the sprays don't really match the colour from the pots. So for best results, painting a base colour first is always a good idea as we want to be sure it's the actual colour we want. And if we make any mistakes and have to neaten up using the paint from the pot, it won't be so noticeable if we did this with just the undercoat colour. Like neatening up any mess made whilst painting the armour joints. With those steps done, we can now think about highlighting the power armour. With black, you can't really create any shading or shadows to bring out all that detail, so we have to rely on the highlighting to do the work for us. I'm going to go into some detail about highlighting, because it's a skill that when you're able to do it well, you can pretty much paint anything, as it's a great way to practice brush control. Let's get our brush first of all. I use a small layer brush, and I like to keep one separate just for highlighting. And when we're thinning our paint for highlighting, I find I don't use as much water as I normally would, as we won't be applying multiple layers. I then remove some of the paint on some paper towel, which is going to help us keep control of our paint and prevent thick blobby lines. Our first highlight is going to be a chunky highlight using Dark Reaper, and this wants to be quite a thick line, so it can still be seen when we apply thinner highlights later. To make this easier, I'm almost using the side of my brush for this to get the thickness I'm after. This highlight is really going to help define and start to bring out all the details and panels of the armour. 
The next highlight we're going to paint is an edge highlight using Dawnstone and this is going to be a thinner highlight than the first one we did. We can make things easier by using the side of our brush and running it along any edges to paint the highlights. If you have places you can't do this then just take your time painting thin lines along those edges to create the highlight. This can be quite difficult to do and it does take a lot of time and practice to get good at but it really does make a massive difference in bringing out all those details on your miniatures. The last stage of highlights is going to be a spot highlight and we're going to use administratum grey to bring out all the more prominent edges and corners on the armour. If you want to get fancy you can paint some scratches and chips in the armour using Dawnstone. I find you get better results taking your time and not rushing this step. Now we've finished painting our Raven Guard Power Armour, hopefully you can see the difference Highlighter makes and we can now move on and get all the metallic details painted. In this section of the tutorial I want to show you how to get all the metals painted. Painting any metal details on Raven Guard is pretty straightforward as it's mostly silver. But I do want to show you how to paint some gold details as well, just in case you need to. As well as already having painted the armour joints with iron hand steel, let's also use iron hand steel to paint the other silver details around our raven guard. For any weapon casings, let's paint them using iron warriors. Using these different tones of silver helps break up details, making them a bit more interesting. And using Norn Oil on all these silver details will help create definition, making all our details easier to see. Finish any silver details with an edge highlight using Runefang Steel. If you have any details you want to paint gold, start with some Retributor Armour. Next apply some Right Clan Flesh Shade to bring out the details. Runefang Steel can then be used again to highlight the gold. Now we've gone through painting all the metal details on our Raven Guard, we can move on to painting company colours. I now want to show you how to paint some of the company colours that our Raven Guard might come from. Before we look at painting some of the different companies though, I want to show you how to paint any chest decorations. Paint the chest eagle with Corax White to start with. Then apply some Apothecary White Contrast to give us some definition. Finish these details with a highlight of White Scar. The Space Moon chapter is split up into different companies depending on their support role. And different colours are used to identify which company Space Moon belongs to. Now there are 10 companies, but I am only going to be showing you examples of the more common companies that are used. Let's start with the second company. First start with Avalon Sunset. Next paint a chunky highlight using Flash Kits Yellow. Then finish with an edge highlight of Dawn Yellow. For the third company, start with Mephiston Red. Evil Sun Scarlet is then used for the chunky highlight and Wild Rider Red for the edge highlight. As well as our Space Marines come in from one of the support companies, there are times when veterans join the battle alongside them. You can spot a Raven Guard veteran because you'll see them with white arms, contrasted against the black armour. Start with some Corex white, making sure we have a nice solid colour to start with. Now we want to paint from Rizzing Grey directly into all the recesses and around details. Finish any white arms using white scar for an edge highlight. There's only a few details left to paint on our raven guard, so let's now finish this tutorial going through the steps to getting these painted. Some of the last details to paint on our raven guard are things like leather, the sergeant's helmet and lenses. I now want to go through anything else you may need to know to finish painting your Raven Guard. Starting with any belts and pouches. To paint any belts and pouches, let's start with some Rhinox Hide as a base colour. Next we want to paint a chunky highlight using Mournfang Brown. And during this step we can paint little scratches focusing along the edges we've highlighted 
giving the impression of cracked leather. Finish any belts and pouches using Carrick Stone for an edge highlight. A sergeant stands out in his squad with their white helmet. Again, start with some Corex white. Now apply some apothecary white contrast to give us some definition. Use Corex white again to neaten up and paint the raised areas and details on the helmet. Finish the helmet with a highlight of white scar. The last thing left to paint are the lenses and all the helmets. First paint a thin line in the centre of each lens using white scar. We can then apply some Blood Angels contrast into each lens to make it look like they're glowing. We've now gone through everything you may need to know to get your own Raven Guard painted. So let's see how it turned out. Our Raven Guard is now finished and I hope I've been able to give you the confidence and knowledge to go away and paint your own. I've got plenty of other tutorials on the channel, including some of the other Space Marine chapters. I really enjoy making these tutorials and I hope you find them useful. You can really help the channel by liking the video and commenting below. You can also support me at Patreon which makes a massive difference in helping me make these tutorials. Make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future content and I'll see you in the next video.